Hello Guardians, it is Ebontis here. It is April 23rd, we are back in another week in Destiny. Iron Banner has returned for your Crucible Wares. The Revelry is in week 2 for your Spring Event and the Verdant Forest. Uh, we've got Shattered Throne because it is Curse Week in the Dreaming City. Curse Week 3, I should say. And uh, yeah, there's quite a few things going on. There's a couple things that are broken, so we're going to cover a few tips and tricks and pointers for you guys with regards to the Revelry and uh, a couple other things. But as always, we will start in the Director just to show you guys what we've got to run down for the week. First off, the Flashpoint is on Titan. Make sure you guys knock that one out for your easy, powerful gear. Vanguard Basics, so your Adventures, Story Missions, and Regular Strikes. You're going to have a Void Singe all week long. It is a Triple Heavyweight week, though, so that is a bonus. So they'll have Heavyweight on both Tuesday, Friday, and Monday. So if you're looking to grind out any strikes for anything that you might be missing, Heavyweight does make those a little bit more uh, palatable. For your Nightfalls this week, we've got some good ones. We've got the Corrupted, which is going to get you the Horror's Lease Pulse Rifle. It's definitely one I know some people are missing, myself included. We've got Strange Train, which is going to net you the Braytech Osprey Rocket Launcher. Definitely one of those for the destination, so I may be grinding a lot of Nightfalls this week. If you need one on PC, hit me up in the comments. I may be doing quite a few runs on these, and the more people in there, the better. Exodus Crash, finally, you can get the Exotic Sparrow in there, but I think it's everybody's least favorite strike. So if you skip this one, I don't think anyone's going to blame you. But that is your three Nightfalls, uh, but between the Corrupted and a Strange Train, there's definitely some stuff people are going to need to grind out for. In Gambit, um, pretty standard stuff in here. For the Reckoning this week, we are going to have a Solar Singe, so if you guys are looking for specific calendar dates, I don't know if I can find an updated calendar after they threw some things off, but Solar is your Singe all week long for Tier 1, 2, or 3, and you should be facing the Likeness of Oryx, um, so we're back to that mode for the Tier 3 boss fight. So, Tier 3 should be the Likeness of Oryx, Solar Singe. Today is Brawler and Attrition. I'm not sure I would put those together if it were me, so I might wait for a heavyweight day and see if this thing becomes a little bit nicer. For me, it's either going to be... Typically, actually, I found the heavyweight and blackout. While blackout may sound kind of troubling, uh, once you get to the bridge and kind of the other fights, most of the guys really aren't too bad, especially if you have a tether with you. So, yeah, depending on prism or blackout with heavyweight seems to be the ones that I'm going to wait for. So today is not the day that I'm going to be doing Reckoning Tier 3. That's for sure. In the Crucible, as I said, Iron Banner is here, so that is your weekly playlist. Um, power level is in effect, and also the Iron Burden can be effect as well. If you want to lower your power level down 100 and still work on those kills, that definitely will be in effect. It will only be this season. They decided it was just something they'd try, uh, but in the recent TWAB, they said they are going to take it out next season, so maybe they'll mix it up in some other way. So if you are looking for your Iron, uh, for your Wisender Buke, you need 500 kills while under the effects of the Iron Burden. And there's a crazy, there's some emblem you get if you get 2,500. So good luck in the grind. If you enjoy Crucible right now, you are braver than some of us. Because with the Revel Reactive, some of this stuff is broken and we will talk about it. Uh, outside of that, uh, Competitive Crucible is a nightmare. Pretty much due to the Revel Tonic breaking things. Quick Play is about the only reasonable one because it's not going to be all too serious. Uh, Tangled Shore, you've got your Wanted Bounty in there. Make sure you pick that up if you're looking to get any extra powerful gear. And the Dreaming City, as I said, it is Curse Week 3. So, uh, Petra is in Ray Sylvia. You're going to have the Shattered Throne. So, if you guys are looking to get the dungeon run in for any of the pieces of your cosmetics from, um, you know, the Dreaming City, definitely good to knock that one out as much as you can. Uh, your mission is going to be Dark Monastery as well. And we'll do the Ascendant Challenge in a different video. That one's always a bit dicey. Let's go to Eververse and see if she's got anything new for this week with the Revelry and her cosmetics. All right, uh, if you do need to see what comes in these new Jubilant Engrams, just check out my last week's video. I covered everything that's in there. This week, we've got the Mood to Party Bundle. We've just got five Engrams in there, but we do have a new one, Hop Along Bundle. So this is actually going to include the white little um, fluffy ghost. This is going to be the Cottontail Shell, Public Defender, and Omni Telemetry. Um, those are about as generic as it gets, so nothing too crazy in there. But if you do want a bunny for... A ghost, this is where you want to be. Um, your emblems from Arc Week are still here. So if you guys are looking to get those, the Arc Strider definitely can still get those. They are class specific. They are a little bit cheaper, but they only work per class. So just remember that. For the Revelry this week, we've got the Stylish Fist Bump. So just kind of chilling. Pretty easy, low key. The Hype Dance as well. Got this one. Somebody tell me what this one's from. I can never quite remember where all these things are from. I feel like this is some crazy music video or something. We do have this Circumpolar Light. Now, if you're going to look for one of the sparrows that does look unique, this is definitely one of the ones that hits that mark as opposed to last week's. 
Um, as of course, it should be a 160 Sparrow. And if you buy it, at least you should be able to pull it back out until you get your 160 speed. So if you want a nice cosmetic pretty Sparrow, that one is 2,500. Got the ladylike shell as well. The Wassel Sir ship, basically just that big giant uh, freighter type ship with the revelry on it. You got the ghost cheese projection and a couple pieces of the vernal growth armor. Over here for the standard bright dust purchases, we've got the cloister dance. I don't know what that is. You guys know it better than I do. Awkward greeting. Just, hi, hello. Uh, I got a couple for the exotics. You do have the threat display. This is going to be about as generic as, it sh as the ships get. Um, that one really doesn't do much for me. Cavers Glass Aegeus, though. Um, that one actually looks pretty cool. I like that one because it's got the glass effects on the back. Almost a hive-looking dome. You could probably have some crazy fun with some shaders on this one. Doesn't actually look like it's going to affect the glass, but you can definitely mix up what goes with the front. So... Kind of a cool looking one, at least it's unique compared to some of the other ones. You have the twin snake projection, you've got the ornaments for the dune marchers, the hip orders. So they are just basically now going to be bright red. And then for the colony, we've got the XZ812s, gives it a actually pretty cool look. I like that one. Colony always tends to look goofy or camo or rainbow. This one just gives it more of a, you know, almost cabal militaristic look. I like that ornament actually, don't know if I'll get it. 21% Delirium Ornament. Uh, those of you guys with this one, if you want to make it nice and shiny and chrome, this is kind of the time to do it. 700 not that expensive, actually, and as it's a legendary, you're probably going to be using a lot. If you got some dust to spend, that's probably a reasonable ornament to spend it on. Other than that, that should pretty much be everything. We're going to go over to Ava Levante, talk about the revelry, and, um, you know, kind of wrap this thing up. So give me just a minute. I'll head over there. Hello Guardians, I did want to swing by Lord Saladin and talk about Iron Banner real quick. Remember the bounty that is above the piece of gear corresponds. So as you can see, Iron Simaki, wow, well, Simaki, Mark, uh, pairs up with Oath of the Pack. So whatever bounty is above it unlocks your ability to red directly buy a piece. Like say I've grinded out and I have like helms and I'm just missing the boots. I definitely want to focus on capturing zones to make sure I can get this thing unlocked to make sure I get the, the you know, what I want, the piece I'm looking for. Also remember, every one of the bounties has powerful gear on it, so if you're looking to level up, this is actually not a bad way to spend some of your time. For our weapons, uh, I'm going to quickly touch on Roar of the Bear, just because the perks are basically only okay on this one. Uh, Blast Radius is pretty massive, and it's got snapshot sights, and it's got handling. So, I mean, you can have a pretty explosive rocket here for your single shot in PvP. It doesn't track, it doesn't do anything like that, but if you want one explosive rocket, this thing can be pretty good, but I wouldn't worry too much about that one as I would Talons of the Eagle. Now, I'm not saying scout rifles are in a great place, but if you are going to use a scout rifle, one with Outlaw and Rampage is probably going to be a pretty good one to look at because those are two of the main perks that we just all tend to gravitate towards. Stability, usually a pretty decent thing. I'd probably leave it on Polygonal Rifling. I'd pretty much just leave it as is and level up the stability a little bit more. But Outlaw and Rampage on one that you can just earn is actually pretty solid. And in the world of scout rifles, maybe at some point they'll be good. So having one with these perks is actually probably a good idea. Down here we've got Iron Bur Bleh. Down here we have Iron Burden. Excuse me. Uh, joys of doing this commentary live without cutting. Uh, decrease your power level by 100 while participating in the Iron Banner. It's only an Iron Banner, nothing else. Uh, activating Iron Banner Burden can earn credit towards certain triumphs and their rewards. One of the main ones people want is this guy, the Wise Rebuke. Now, this you have to get 500 kills while the effects of Iron Burden are in effect. Now, I don't know if it counts when people are like, say I'm 689 and I go down to 589, and somebody was 688 and they go down to 6. 588. If it actually counts that way, I'm not entirely sure because I think you actually have to be lower. So my advice, honestly, don't be 700. Be a little bit below that. So you're like 695, 689. Like I, this is just randomly who I am. But if I put that on, it'd be 589. Yeah, I might be a little harder to kill, having issues killing people. But the kills I have, I do get, should at least count towards that one. 500 kills is not a short you know, a small number, but you will have this one and next one. So if you do spend some time in Crucible, whether you're grinding something out, uh, you do have double Valor this week and then maybe triple this weekend. Sometimes they throw that in there, but at least you have increased Valor this week. So if you are grinding for multiple things, it doesn't seem like a bad time to do it. But sadly, the Weissen Rebuke, Moving Target and de Demolitionist, you've got Max Stability, Hit Mark, Enhanced Battery. Moving Target is okay. Movement Speed and Target Acquisition when aiming down sights is a good thing. Demolition, Demolitionist, though, unfortunately, kills with this weapon generate grenade energy. Activating your, activating your grenade ability reloads this weapon from reserves. So there's no bonus or charge time or anything that you get out of this one. And sadly, the old one that you used to be able to get from your collections, at least you had it previously, 
When you go look at it, it's better because it had backup plan. When you switch over, you get that really quick charge time. And as this thing is nearly max impact, no matter what modifiers you put on this thing, uh, backup plan was great. And just the fact that it doesn't have any more is kind of sad. So I wish it did have backup plan. It still may be okay, but sadly the other one's not really making this one look so great. Uh, but that's pretty much for it for Iron Banner. Let's go see what Ava Levante has. And just a quick reminder before we go talk about her. Uh, the Verdant Forest, uh, your daily bounty enhancement core for killing two bosses. If you basically do a run, you'll get two bosses killed. So if you're looking for some enhancement cores over the next couple weeks, get a run in here every day. Something like that if you're around. Just spend like 10 minutes, 20 minutes, get a run, knock it out. It's a quick core that you can control. So may as well get that one while you can. All right, now let's go talk about the rest of this stuff. Okay, before we go talk to Ava, I do want a couple issues that are going on right now. Uh, one of them, they said to prevent guitar errors, they revelry orb generation on precision kills, which is kind of the bonus orbs that will explode when you get precision kills, currently is disabled in all of the following. Raids, Competitive Crucible, Gambit, and Gambit Prime. So, this basically is going to come into play for specific triumphs that you need. So when you're working for the Arbalist, you need seven total triumphs. The ones that you can get that are fairly easy are going to be uh, clear simulation branches. I think it's 50 or 100. Somebody, I think, said it was 50. It's really not too bad to clear 50. You guys should be able to knock that one out in a few runs. Um, okay, so this one is cooperative. So generate orbs of light in strikes or raids while affected by revelric light. So this one's only going to be effective in strikes now, so don't try and finish this one in raids. This one over here. Uh, generate orbs in the Verdant Forest, Verdant, sorry, the Verdant Forest, or any Black Army Forge. That one should not be affected. Down here, you've got three bosses in one run. That one, if you just do multiple runs over, this one will get checked off. Uh, the bosses should not be an issue. Uh, it's five boss, or 20 bosses total, but you have to be wearing four pieces of armor. This is not the one I would try and do first. Uh, down here, we've got Fireworks, Land Grenade, Final Blows. If you turn the Revel Work Tonic onto Grenade Buffs, this one shouldn't be too hard. Because um, it's in Crucible, Gambit, or Strikes. Now, you can still get the final blows with grenades in those places. You just won't be making the orbs. Uh, for Super Celebration, defeat enemies using super abilities in any activity. Uh, you need 150 here to actually get yourself a special emblem. So, use your super as much as you can. You should be making a lot of orbs uh, when possible. So, make sure you are getting those super kills as much as you can. Get yourself that extra emblem. It's actually kind of cool. The ones that are going to be harder. Verdant Light Competitive. So, generate orbs while in Crucible or Gambit while affected by Revel Grick Light. So, it is, these, this is turned off. The orbs will not be generated on, in Competitive, Gambit, or Gambit Prime. So, your only place is going to be potentially Iron Banner or Quick Play. You will not get those in the other playlist right now. So, keep that in mind. If you're looking for the orbs, Iron Banner or Quick Play, maybe Rumble, I guess, would be another option as well. I don't think Private Matches is going to work. So, the three on your left, definitely not Competitive or Gambit. You're going to have to spend your time uh, for Gambit for other things. But yeah, those orbs are not going to be coming from Gambit. Budding Fashion, uh, defeat that one's just by wearing four pieces. Over here, uh, melee final blows in the Verdant Forest. If you turn your melee on and again run around the forest, pu just, just punch every little enemy you see. This one usually will get the box checked. And this one is just the bounties. You just got to spend some time doing as many weekly and daily bounties as you can over the course of these three weeks. If you do want to finish the full triumph, but if you don't need all 11 for the party harder in the emblem, and you just want 7, that will get you the Arbalist. Uh, so the 7 I've got done were the ones that I've basically checked. I think I did one extra one. Uh, but most of these are pretty straightforward. As you can see, the ones that have taken me a little longer to do. But I wanted to let you guys know, orbs will not be generated in raids, competitive crucible, gambit, or gambit prime. So quick play mostly is where you're going to be seeing those competitive, and then strikes for your uh, co-op orbs. Those are probably your two best bets for those. Now up here at... Ava. Uh, if you've already bought Arbalist, it would be sitting right up here on the screen next to the Revelers assortments, but it's going to be typically right up here. Now, just remember, if you guys are looking to level up characters, you can get some pretty big level bumps with these powerful Revelry engrams. Um, they're really actually not that hard to get. <laughs> so defeat bosses, generate Revelry orbs with precision final blows, complete Vanguard strikes or Nightfall strikes, Crucible or Gambit matches. You can still do these mostly just because the only one that has orbs, you can do that in the forest anyway. And then you've got your daily bounties down here, which will get you plenty of essence. So you can have some fun with your uh, tonic. But the one to watch out for is this Reveler's Assortments. So we're aware of an issue where players might not acquire... Um, actually, this is separate, but it's from the Jubilant Engrams I was talking about back at Eververse. Um, 
If you open them across multiple characters, you may not get all the things that you're going for. So try and open most of your engrams on the same character if they are cosmetics. So you might be limited to one character depending on what you're doing. Or if you are getting duplicates, it's because you're on different characters. So this is, sorry, not for the Reveler's Assortments. That's the engrams back at Eververse. I did want to mention something here, though. The Reveler's Assortments. What you get from this is going to be your ornaments, which is going to be your antlers, uh, gear, enhancement cores, things like that. Now, I'll get one of these just to show you guys. And I got a blue. So, I've had people spend, told me they've spent a lot of essence on this thing and not get what they need to get. And most people want the ornaments. And then the sad thing is, once you get either piece of gear that actually works with the ornaments, that you can actually plop it in here, which is going to go right here. And I don't have any of them yet. This is the one that's going to get you the antlers. Sadly, these only last for the duration of the revelry. Now, that is an issue I have with the functionality of getting something cool and cosmetic and not letting it continue to be fun and shiny when the revelry is done. It's kind of an annoyance of mine that I've got because I have no reason to grind it out. If it's gone in two weeks, I'm not going to spend chance on this little RNG box that she's got here trying to, like, break my face over getting um, an ornament that may or may not last. And to my knowledge, it's not going to last after the revelry. So the ornaments that you get, the more pieces you wear, the bigger they get, they look really cool, they're going to go away. So, to me, there's not much point once you have the Arbalist, unless you just want to hit the daily bounties and get your ornament or your emblem. There's not much point in getting those ornaments on the antlers unless you just want to enjoy them for two weeks. If you get them on your first couple of packages, cool, but I would not kill yourself over these. That is just my personal opinion. And as the fact they're going away, you're probably not going to get to enjoy them for very long anyway. Uh, but that is it for this week in uh, Destiny 2. So, you've got Shattered Throne, you've got Iron Banner. And you've also got, um, we're in week two of the Revelry. So if you are looking for Arbalist, it is kind of a unique gun. Um, it would be a cool one, just may as well add it to your collection while the quest is here. It's really not too bad to get if you spend some time in the forest. Um, would be sitting right over here. I've got mine. I got it pretty early on last week. And while it is kind of cool, um, it doesn't do some of the things I was hoping for. If you guys do want to see me do a review of this one, I don't typically do reviews of weapons, but I have some opinions, so if you do want to see a review, leave a comment below. I might put one of those together for later in the week as well. Uh, but that pretty much wraps it up. Grind out for your Arbalist, spend some time in Iron Banner, enjoy the Shattered Throne, because that's still my favorite piece in Destiny 2, because I can solo the whole thing, and it's a ton of fun. And other than that, enjoy your week in the world of Destiny. I know this one rambled a little bit long here for Ava Levante, but for these revelry orbs and the issues with the errors and things they've got going on, I wanted to cover them for all of you guys. So thank you very much for tuning in. If you did enjoy the video, drop a like below. Leave a comment if you just want to say hello or any opinions I said about previously. You can find me on Twitch and Twitter. It's Ebontis on both, but right here on YouTube. If you haven't subbed to the channel yet, please do so. It definitely helps me out, and I look forward to seeing you in another video. Have an awesome afternoon. Enjoy your week, and I'll see you soon.